let's start CCIE Enterprise course. So I will introduce first myself and then I will talk about the course agenda. So in the CCIE Enterprise, although this one will be focused on the lab, but definitely will be useful for the written uh, type of exams as well. And by the way, CCA Enterprise is very well overlapping with the CCDE anymore because there will be design module in the CCA Enterprise exam. So in fact, three hours out of eight, so 40% of the exam will be design module. So that's why in our training, we will cover theory, we will cover design, as well as we will cover labs. So we will uh, go through the lots of uh, theory topics. So what? What is BGP? Then design we will talk. Why BGP? What are the steps if we are doing the migration, etc. For smooth migration, what should be the operation? Then we will talk about, we will show you the topologies, large ones, sometimes very complex ones. Uh, to try to mimic the maybe exam as well as real life, we will do the labs as well. So that's the uh, methodology which we will follow. And let me introduce myself. I'm Orhan Ergun. Uh, I am CCA and CCDE. I have been teaching CCDE for, I think now, seven years. And... I think around 70, 80 of my students passed the CCD exam and got their numbers. Uh, last last couple of years, uh, it was I think 30, 35 percent of the, each and every CCD. They were my students in the world, and we have less than 500 uh, CCD people in the world as of 2020. And by the way, that certification also around. 13, 14 years, and this is very, very less number, I know, but uh, every year we are seeing only maybe sometimes only 20, 30 uh, people passing the exam in a year, sometimes maximum, uh, as I remember, it was 70, uh, maybe 2015, I think, so very less people there, I have been teaching that, and for the CCIE, we have been doing for some time, and good amount of students there and basically this class will be for the CCA enterprise but uh, I am happy to see design embedded in the CCIE anymore not only operation not only configuration but also design uh, will be dash orhanergun.net is my website uh, throughout the course I will refer you some of my articles also uh, publicly, I cover many topics which we are not covering in the CCIE course because it's not in the, of course, in the blueprint. Uh, very new technologies like routing in fed trees or bit index expli explicit replication or some new use cases for the location and identity separation protocol. Though Lisp in the CCIE enterprise somehow because Lisp is the control plane at the moment of the. SD access. So those technologies are on my YouTube channel, the Orhan Ergin YouTube channel as well. You can follow. We have so many technical resources. So as I told you, website orhanergin.net and YouTube channel should be followed. Uh, on the website, I think around at the moment 200, 250 articles there. There was four, 400 plus but somehow uh, there was a problem and we lost some of our articles on the website. So let's move yeah. on. Okay, let me go through the course outline agenda. What we will talk in the uh, CC Enterprise course. By the way, we will, I, can, I should say that we will talk more than what CCIE Enterprise Blueprint covers. So whatever you will see here, much more than CC Enterprise, but uh, because I think that CCIE level person should know some technologies which are not in the CCIE blueprint. I will tell you what are those things. Little bit detailed explanation will be not just, uh, of course, reading the slides. I like the PowerPoint. I told you this one a lot. I like because all the things 
are prepared in advance, we don't lose time to draw the topology, etc., or uh, creating a failure scenarios, etc. You can just prepare the animation, you can prepare the topologies, etc. But uh, generally, those are for me just reminders, uh, which mean I don't read each and every line sometimes in the PowerPoint, of course. Uh, but single line sometimes takes maybe five, ten minutes for me to explain. Okay. So we will start from the layer two technologies. So our first topic will be layer two technology. By the way, in the self-based CCD, CCIE course, uh, what you will see, uh, EVNG. EVNG will be our uh, lab simulator. Almost every technology, even SD van will be simulated, can be simulated by EVNG. So you can use yourself as well, your own PC or server, or you can use our server. And uh, you can, by just using the EVNG, you can simulate any technology. This is a good thing. This is 2020 anymore. We don't need those physical rags uh, unless you are planning something for the production environment, right? So we are preparing ourselves for the exam. So that's why simulator is fine. And in Serpase course, you, you will see as a first technical topic, EVNG introductions. So, but I will not go through the EVNG introduction. We will start from the layer two technologies. The first technical topic will be. And when it comes to layer two technologies, there are of course so many things, but some are uh, in the CCIE blueprint, some we will talk maybe more than CCIE blueprint as I told you, but still there will be some technologies which we will not talk, but you will see in this slide. And the reason for that is uh, I will cover them in the self-paced course, self-paced CCIE course you will see, and uh, basically for more knowledge. For example, G832 rep, as you can see on the slide now. And in the second page, which I will show you in a minute, uh, there is TSN, time sensitive networking, etc. These are not uh, CCA topic, but as I told you, I will talk about those and you will see later on in this side based course for more knowledge. But what we will talk, spanning tree, of course, should be understood very well. Uh, common spanning tree, RSTP, NMST, so all those. Uh, standard based protocols, CST, Radia Perlman, 30 years ago when she invented, still it's used in some networks and still it is uh, our concern. So we will talk per VLAN span to plus Cisco's implementation. Also, we will talk about it. What are the uh, enhancements, so on and so forth. Rapid spanning tree and multiple spanning tree we will discuss. And as I told you first, from theory as well as design aspect, so why I will choose uh, RSTP, MST, not CST, for example, why? We will answer this question. We will go through what is VLAN-based load balancing, what is flow-based load balancing. Understanding, yes, VLAN flow-based load balancing is important because when we go through other technologies like VPLS, EVPN, etc., Understanding advantages of eVPN will be based on understanding flow-based load balancing, for example. What is VLAN-based, flow-based load balancing, active-active forwarding uh, will be important for us. Though VPLS and uh, eVPN, VPLS uh, might be st still in the CCA blueprint, but eVPN is not, though we will talk about it. Uh, Ethernet VPNs. Today it's a reality, guys. So in many data centers, especially, they are using eVPN. Many, many, many thousands of data centers, they are using eVPN. And uh, I can say common data plane for the eVPN anymore is what? VXLAN. So we will cover those. They, are, they should be placed and probably the, by the time we will see Maybe not version one, this is CC Enterprise version one. Maybe other versions we will be seeing uh, eVPN and VXLAN and so on and so forth. VXLAN should be covered anyway because SD access also using VXLAN as a data plane. 
but eVPN is not there. Uh, I think it would be in in the CCI blueprint if SD access would use eVPN as a control plane. It is Lisp today, uh, though it might change. It might change also. SD access control plane might be eVPN. This is hot debate in the industry today. We will go through when we come to SD access. Uh, so we will talk about it. Link aggregation, multi link aggregation, VSS, VPC, some Cisco proprietary uh, multi link aggregation mechanisms we, we will talk. Then uh, there is layer 2 multipath concept which we will not go through, but uh, throughout the course I will mention. These are transparent interconnection of loops of links, TRIL. Then this TRIL is standard based implementation of layer 2 multipathing. Uh, fabric path Cisco implementation, provider bridging. Uh, provider bridging is, I mean, of course, we will go while uh, we talk in the course. Uh, what is VLAN in, in VLAN, Q in Q? What is MAC in MAC, PBB, provider backbone bridging? And what is short path bridging, SPV? Throughout the course, I will just mention, but as a separate topic, it, it, these are very well outside of uh, CC Enterprise scope, so I am not go through. As I told you, G8 Kurt to wrap, especially in the service provider access domain for the phase 3 route purpose, they are used, but we will not go through also. Another focus for us will be first stop redundancy protocols. I, I would expect to see in the exam, uh, even in the design module, from the layer 2 perspective, design module of CC Enterprise, I would expect to see uh, first of redundancy protocols. They are HSRP, VRRP, and GLDP. HSRP and GLDP are Cisco proprietary, but still I, I am expecting to see in the CCAE exam. Ha, huh. why you said that, Orhan? If it's Cisco technology, you should already see in the CCAE, right? Maybe, maybe. Because uh, CCDE, for example, we don't see much Cisco proprietary technologies. And now CCIE's design module is very similar to CCDE. That's why if some time after they say we are trying to focus mostly on the standard based protocols, it's not a surprise for me. It will be understandable for me. Uh, HSRP, VRRP, GLBP uh, should be in the CCIE exam because even in the CCT we are seeing all those HSRP and GLDP Cisco preparatory we are seeing in the CCT exam. In, imagine uh, in CCIE definitely we will see the, those first of redundancy protocols. Not only of course configuration. I mean configuration is may, maybe very easy, but design aspect there are things that you should be aware. Uh, you probably heard preemption, right? Preemption, HSRP, VRRP, preemption. But it might be really very important in design, having preemption or not having preemption. Not only HSRP, VRRP, there are other protocols can be preempted or not preempted. And these are important in design. I will show you why. Layer two and layer three interaction we will talk. In, in fact, interaction is very critical from design aspect every protocols protocols more than one when you have they interact in the network what does it mean they synchronize also you might hear this term or you might read this term from some design resources uh, by the way uh, although in the introduction i didn't tell you so from design point of view we have uh, some books in fact, I prepared the Cisco's official CCDE uh, recommended resources uh, with the Elaine Lopez, so previous CCD, CCAR, Cisco program manager, etc. And also Andre Laurent uh, and other CCDE, Cisco's, I think, global uh, enterprise director, some, some, something like that. I prepared with them those resources and uh, some of the resources written by me so like ccd in depth uh, also ccdp architect version 4 i am technical editor of that uh, technical review of 
uh, art of network and uh, architecture. Lots of books uh, which you read today from design aspect, either I am author or technical editor, technical reviewer, something like that. So it is important for us to know uh, these interactions. In each and every of those books, we covered this interaction. Sometimes you might see the keyword as synchronization. Sometimes her face. We are trying to say the same thing. When it comes to, for example, IGP, LDP synchronization. This is even in the many uh, Cisco boxes. You will see as a future IGP, LDP sync. But it is not only IGP, LDP sync are concerned in design. So what does it mean? IGP, OSP, FISS, when you use together with LDP. So whenever you want to have, let's say, MPLS VPN service, basically this is very common to have OSP, FISS uh, together with the LDP, right? So synchronization, which means the following those protocols each other is very critical. Otherwise, you will see some black holes. Of course, right now I will not start, just I am giving as an example because without topologies, Without seeing the architecture, it's very hard to understand. Uh, I will show you. But this interaction not only at the higher layer protocols like OSP, FPGP, MPLS, etc. Even in the spanning tree, HSRP case, we will see those interactions. We will see those synchronizations. Which means if some links, some circuits fail in your access network, and let's say you are running spanning tree and one of those First open down this protocol, HSRP, VRIP, GLPP, what you will see in, ca in, in, in case of failure, you will see maybe packet loss. And when traffic comes back, you might see uh, when, let's say, failed link or failed device comes back, you might see uh, black holing, you might see suboptimal forwarding, so on and so forth. By the way, you will need to get used to these terms, suboptimal routing, optimal routing, suboptimal forwarding, optimal forwarding. These are very common terms throughout the course we will use a lot. So uh, I will explain what are those things. So some best practices, VLAN, VTP, DTP, etc. we will go through in layer two. And layer two traffic engineering. What? What is layer two traffic engineering? Uh, because, okay, we heard MPLS traffic engineering, though we don't know what is that. I will cover, don't worry. MPLS traffic engineering also is not the CCIE enterprise uh, concern. It's not in the blueprint, of course, but very high level, I will teach you what is MPLS traffic engineering, why you use that, what type of networks can benefit uh, from MPLS traffic engineering, etc. But traffic engineering, in fact, not only MPLS RSVP concern, uh, of course, today you are hearing also SR, Segment Routing Traffic Engineering SRTE, but this is not MPLS, this is not IPv6 concern. Uh, you are doing traffic engineering in IGP with the any routing protocol. You are also doing today in layer two, just spanning three VLAN and how you are doing, I will show you. Okay. As I told you, this will not be seen. Uh, by the way, yeah, I mean, TSM will not be seen in the uh, course. Uh, I will cover in the self based course. So you can later on have a look at why we have time sensitive networking, what are the use cases in IoT, etc. etc. Layer 2 and layer 3 access designs we will talk. So when I tell you loop 3 layer 2 access design, loop layer 2 access design, routed access design, what are the pros and cons of each? Uh, how it works? You need to understand. Okay, we will talk. Then first of security mechanisms. Also in the lab, we will cover uh, DHCP snooping, IP RP inspection, uh, blah blah blah. We will talk source card, so and so forth. URPF. And there are some mechanisms which we will talk. We will show you in the lab. Okay. This one just layer two, by the way. As I told you, even introduction will take some time because we have many topics and uh, it will take some time. Layer three routing point of view, IGP first, let's say. 
Newer come. OSPF and EIGRP is our concern for CC Enterprise. Though for my students, I will show ISAs as well. Very high level, not even maybe configuration, but why we need to have ISAs. Already we have OSPF. Both are link state protocols. Okay, what are, I mean, okay, service providers are using it. That's why, no. I mean, there might be some advantages. That's why service providers are using. Okay. We need to understand what are those advantages. And in design, there is no best protocol. Very first thing that you should know in design, there is no best. If there, there is best, why we have others? If there is best, why we have others? There is no best. In a given context, from some point of view, there might be best. From some point of view. Which means, you cannot ask question, is OSPF ISS or EIGRP better? Answer will be always depends. Or someone might tell you, answer is whichever you like, whichever you know. Okay? But if I would ask you which one would be converging faster, you might maybe give some answer. Which one could be considered more secure? So some given context. Uh, so that's why we will understand that what are those con context design attributes also generally I call it. And given design attribute, which one is best? We will try to find the answer for that. First, routing protocol for us in the course will be OSPF. And my methodology, I will go through the theory first. Okay, what is OSPF LSA? What is OSPF area, ASBR? What type of LSA? What type of areas we have? So on and so forth. And we need to understand fast convergence with the OSPF, scalability with the OSPF, scalability. How many devices I can place in a given OSPF area? There is no numerical number, we will talk about it, but can I put more? Yeah. Can I send more prefixes? Of course. Even in the same network, your design and my design might be different and I might place much more devices in a even given area or uh, in entire network, maybe multiple areas. So scalability is not just multi-area OSPF. There are some features, uh, mesh group, prefix suppression, so on and so forth. We will take some advantage of those features and we will try to make our networks more scalable. And we will, of course, talk about multi-area, hierarchical also is called, hierarchical OSPF design, multi-area OSPF design. Phase 3 route with OSPF. Oh, Orhan, you already said that, phase convergence. No, they are different things. That's why, actually, I am uh, showing in a different line. So, phase convergence we will talk, and then phase 3 route we will talk. Same uh, idea will be for the other protocols as well. ISAS phase convergence, ISAS phase 3 route, EIGRP phase convergence, EIGRP phase 3 route, BGP phase convergence, BGP phase 3 route. Different things. Can then we say phase convergence and phase 3 route is different thing? Yeah, I mean, yes, interchangeable. I, they are not interchangeable, they are very related. <clears throat> they are very related. <clears throat> different thing, related. We need to understand the differences. So when I tell you phase three route, you should be able to talk minutes. You should tell me it is data plane convergence. What, what is data plane convergence then? You see, many things. Uh, we have time. We will learn all. We will go through <clears throat> overlay technologies and OSPF interaction. What does it mean? Can you use OSPF with the GRE tunnel? Can OSPF be underlay for the GRE tunnel and can OSPF be overlay? Or MGRE or the MEPN, GetVPN, LISP, how they work together? Do we have tunnel with GetVPN? Do we have any tunnel? Can OSPF be overlay underlay for the GetVPN? What are the considerations using OSPF on top of the MEPN? Same, those kind of things, huh? So the MEPM phase two, we can we, we need to do the daisy chaining on the hub and some aspects when it comes to OSPF, 
with those overlay technologies. And same methodology, as I told you, I will follow for the other routing protocols. ISAS, overlay technologies, and ISAS, I will say. And OSPF, although it can work on top of DMVPN, ISAS cannot. OSPF in the data centers, enterprise, and SP networks. What are the reasons? Why we are using OSPF in the data center and what are the cases which, which we cannot use OSPF in the data center? What are the expectations from the very large scale data centers? What they expect from the routing protocols? What would be the fan out ratio? 11th and mice flows, how we will do traffic engineering. I mean, so many discussions we would have. OSP in the enterprise networks and SP networks, what are the use cases? Where OSPF is used in the SP network? Multiple places, maybe as an infrastructure IGP. So bringing the service provider network, those edge devices together, communication between those edge devices, or maybe as a PECE, you will hear this term a lot in this course because MPLS layer 3 VPN is the, in, even in the blueprint, okay? Though layer 2 VPN, MPLS layer 2 VPN is not in the blueprint, we will go through, we will talk about it. Both Martini, Compella, different approaches we will discuss. Not only Martini, Compella, they are with the pseudo wire because pseudo wire technologies, but also we will discuss eVPN without eVPN, is, uh, there is no pseudo wire, of course. So layer 2 VPNs, we will talk uh, very heavily. OSPF is a PECE, which means layer 3 VPN, MPLS layer 3 VPN can be used as well in the side provider networks, which we will go through. Design best practices. I will say, don't use hierarchical OSPF, multi array OSPF design unless, it, unless if it's necessary. But when it will be necessary, we will see. Or use OSPF uh, prefix suppression. Uh, if you are looking for scalability as the first place before you deploy hierarchical OSPF design. What OSPF prefix suppression is doing then? You need to understand it, right? Can I do OSPF prefix suppression with the other protocols? I like to discuss any feature in any protocol, okay? Then compare it with other protocols. Okay, can I do this? With the other protocols as well. So there is a future, let's say. Uh, let's give real example. Like Max Metric Router LSA. It's used for black hole avoidance in case of failure. Can I have same feature in other protocols? I like to know this. Yes, in ISS I can. In EIGIP I can. In BGP I can. And those protocols, by the way, will be our focus. These are general purpose routing protocols, which we can use in the local area, wide area, in the data center, so on and so forth. But if you are looking for specific to some areas, there are many protocols like six, six low pan, uh, ripple, uh, money extensions, Babel, right? Zigbee and many protocols there. Not only IoT, by the way could be beer and uh, lots of others, AMTs, blah, 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 but we don't use uh, those protocols in every place in the network. We cannot, or Rift, or BGP plus SPFN. So they are specific to some environment, very highly meshed data center environment. Why? So we will not talk about those, though in the YouTube channel, as I told you, you can see some videos on those. We talked about Beer, we talked about Ripple, we talked about Rift, we talked about Lisp. We talked about many protocols which you will not see in the CCIE. They are in my YouTube channel. In fact, I discussed those protocols with the inventors of those protocols. So with the founder of those protocols like Lisp, Dino Farinacci, uh, Rift, Tony P, etc. We discussed, right? So you can have a look at later on if you want. But as I told you, in the beginning, it might be advanced for you. 
you need to understand this course very well. I think after that it will be easier for you to grasp the information in those videos as well. So ISAS, as I told you, same methodology which we will talk. By the way, this uh, instead of CCE, we need to change it as CCIE exam. What are the expectations? What I would expect to see in the CCIE exam from OSPF, ISAS, those technologies point of view. Uh, ISAS theory will start. What is LSP? What is TLV? Those are, sorry, normally this one would be um, in the CCDE exam or CCA research provider, this one would be our uh, topics. I will, as I told you, teach my CCA enterprise students. Also, I will place the video on the Surface course. So these are the topics which we will cover there. So same methodology, theory, phase convergence, phase zero, scalability. Here we have advertised passive only for the uh, scalability parameter similar to prefix suppression. I will explain. Multi-level hierarchical ISP, ISAS design, multi-level ISAS design. We have two levels anyway, both OSPF and ISAS, both OSPF and ISAS. We have only two level of hierarchy. EIGRP, we will say as many as you want, okay? Then interaction with the other overlay protocols, GRE, MGRE, DMVPN should be get VPN here as well. Uh, then data centers, how we are using SAS, enterprise and SP networks, how we are using it, design best practices, uh, advantage, disadvantage. So comparing it with the other protocols there in advantage, disadvantage. Why OSPF? Why ISAS? Why not OSPF? Why ISAS? Why not EIGRP? Etc. EIGRP, same methodology, theory, convergence, scalability, many design aspects as you can see here after theory. And as I told you, let me remind and let, I will remind you a couple times also, my CCIE methodology is not just theory and design, but also labs will be there. Okay? So here, which whatever we will see, EIGRP, uh, in EIGRP, there is not much, anyway, uh, interesting stuff. Okay, feasible successor. And how feasible successor works, how it can contribute to the convergence, and what would be the difference between EIGRP feasible successor and EIGRP phase 3 route, EIGRP LFA, let's say, look for the alternate from the convergence point of view. What is EIGRP setup? What would be the, some uh, problems with the EIGRP setup deployment and blah, blah, blah. Those are interesting stuff actually in EIGRP to talk and to do the lab as well. Uh, other than that, of course, with the EIGRP, how we can manipulate the path, how we can do the traffic engineering, uh, we will uh, talk about it. Also, we will talk in OSPF, of course, same thing. Different metrics, those IGP metrics, how we be used for the path manipulation traffic engineering purpose. A BGP, in the course outline, you will see so many things, but we will not go through each and everything, to be honest. We have here, I am showing you three pages BGP, but uh, let me tell you what we will cover very fast in this training, uh, because uh, there is so much here, which I mean, even they are, some of them, they are out of uh, CCD exam scope, not only CCIE. Just uh, sometimes, if we have so so much time, I like to talk. Or if students are asking a question, uh, I go through. Otherwise, we start with the BGP basics. What is autonomous system? Why BGP? We are using BGP. Though, just why BGP? To be honest, can take five hours talk. Why we are using BGP? It's not just saying okay. It is because. Uh, predictable technology, TCP based, reliable, blah, blah, blah. So many things. Policies we need to talk, traffic engine we need to talk, scalability we need to talk, reliability we need to talk, uh, interaction with other, other uh, protocols we need to talk. So many things. Multi protocol capabilities and P capabilities of BGP we need to talk. And just MP capabilities takes hours and hours. But we will try to keep it short 
very high level we need to understand at least why BGP is plus. What is autonomous system? How we are using autonomous system? Then BGP based pest selection I am covering at the very first place because throughout the entire BGP discussion we will use this BGP based pest selection. So you will when you see okay BGP based pet, BGP next stop has to be reachable then uh, longest match always will win then local prefect spirit origin met after that we need to check if the pet if the um, prefix is coming from EG, EBGP versus IBGP EBGP will be preferred to IBGP then if it's just IBGP we will rely on hot potato routing what is hot potato routing uh, we will go through don't worry and after that, I will explain what is BMP, BGP Monitoring Protocol, what it can do, what it cannot do. Uh, then we will start with the eBGP after that, right? External VGP, exterior VGP, whatever you call it, eBGP, global routing, default free zone. I mean, we can name it with many things. Default free zone we are using uh, in real life a lot, especially service provider people. Uh, I was explaining, by the way, those design books, I forgot to say, I have also Service Provider Network Design and Architecture book. It's uh, unique. There is no any other book in the world explaining the real life uh, service providers, not only, I mean, I'm saying service providers, general, ISP, ASP, CSP, MP, uh, MNOs, all of them. Huh? So lots of type of uh, service providers, single book covering uh, I think around 400 pages uh, service provider network design and architecture EBGP we in those service provider networks we say default free zone which I will go through when we come to BGP we basically use that heavily right uh, IXPs, Internet Exchange Point Environment, everywhere we use EBGP, we will understand it. We will talk about multipathing. Multipath can be done in three ways IBGP multipath, EBGP multipath, EIBGP multipath. So if prefix come both from EBGP as well as IBGP neighbors, how I can do load balancing through EBGP as well as IBGP neighbors? Don't worry. <laughs> oh, so much complexity. What's happening? Don't, don't scare. We have a lot of time to cover them and we will have topologies, you know, not only the even the talking talk, we will also do the lab. So in 100 hours, I think you will understand what I am talking about. Okay, 100 hours. So it's uh, we have a long journey. Just don't scare. Enjoy, in fact, so many things you will learn. Oh, good. Of course, you are not also CCNA like. I would scare if I wouldn't know anything about this bad gap. What what it says? <laughs> what are those terms? B. What? Okay. B. Border. What is border? I mean, if you don't know anything, I would scare as well. But you have some idea. Maybe you touch some OSPF. Maybe you dealt with uh, spanning tree in, in the past. So that's why now. Putting some extra information on top will be a oh, please. After that, uh, inter-domain routing, I might touch. I might touch. This is totally out of scope of any, in fact, any exam certification. Though, in, in my opinion, this has to be in many, not any, but many exam certification. So in CCD also, you cannot see this uh, inter-domain routing concept. But in real life, it is too much important. So, any decent scale network operators, enterprise service providers, uh, basically, they do BGP peering, uh, either settlement free type of peering, IP transit they receive from each other, uh, or internet transit it's called sometimes. Uh, so, these kind of uh, services needs to be known. That's why I will explain to you guys at the high level you should have an idea when I say SFI, Settlement Free Internet Connection, Settlement Free Peering. What does it mean? Please, please, uh, if you are saying I am the students of Orhan, you should know 
we should at least know a little bit more than what other uh, CCA candidates know or CCA even certificated people know. Uh, also ISP tiers. And when I say, okay, tier one provider, what does it mean? No, any upstream, okay? They don't pay to anyone. They don't pay to anyone to get the uh, reachability to the BGP global routing table. So you 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 probably heard term full intent routing table. They don't receive any routing table uh, from any upstream provider. They might have partner peer, we call it a settlement free peer, or they have just customer, eh? not or and. Because every tier one provider, they will have customer as well as peers, settlement free peers, but they don't have upstream. And today in the world, worldwide tier one, we have around 15, 16 providers. So peeringdb.com is a good place to have a look, peeringdb.com. So like in my service provider design book also, of course, I'm sharing the list of those providers. Like uh, there are many of them, AT&T, NTT, GTT, uh, Telia, blah, 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 KPN, Deutsche Telekom. So on and so forth. So uh, when you check peer and DB record of those people, of those companies, of those ASs, autonomous systems, uh, you will not see upstream provider for them because they don't. They they are able to reach to the internet region, global internet region, without paying to any upstream provider. But as you can see, in two minutes, it's now probably you you learn something, right? You 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 were you didn't know this before. We will do a lot of this kind of discussion now. What is tier one? Very now. Also, you can play with those uh, company names. Google. Google. Do they have any upstream? <laughs> a lot. So peeringdb.com. Put the Google in the search box. You will see where are where Google basically doing the peering, which uh, internet exchange point, where they are doing the open peering, blah blah blah. What type of network they have? Is it content network, eyeball network? What is eyeball? I mean, so many terminologies might be new. You should enjoy with that. Okay. Anyway, we will continue after that with IBGP. Uh, I would expect to see in the exam a lot. By the way, IBGP, full mesh IBGP, route reflector confederations. I would expect to see. Okay. In CCIE enterprise exam. So we will talk about, of course, design options. BGP RRs, uh, route reflectors can be designed in many ways. Of course, service space separation, IPv4 RR, IPv6 RR, VPN V4 RR. Generally, we don't see IPv4, IPv6 as separate, but we see IPv4 as well as VPN V4 separate RRs. There are reasons we will talk. Then uh, route reflectors, based on the placement, they can be uh, designed differently. Like Centralized versus distributed RR, online versus offline RR. So inline, or you can call it also inline. Sorry, on, online we don't, we don't call it inline versus offline RR. Uh, virtual versus physical RR. Uh, so did I tell, tell you centralized versus distributed? By the way, distributed sometimes we call it regional or pop based RRs. So so many different ways, and we will see them. Uh, after that, optimal BGP optimal route reflection. By the way, for this one, uh, those who know BGP optimal route reflection, I mean BGP route reflection, or at least high level BGP, and can understand BGP uh, route reflectors, and don't want to wait a lot of time to we start to the BGP topic. I have BGP optimal route reflection uh, video on YouTube channel publicly. You can have a look at later on. Okay, and BGP Confederation also, we will talk with you guys, what is BGP Confederation, why we have that, we have already route reflection, why we have Confederation, what it solves, uh, which RR cannot solve, and vice versa, why we have different options, okay, it's important, which one, which type of companies they should choose, what are the advantages and disadvantages of these protocols, or deployment models of, uh, let's say, B IBGP. Why? Huh? So these are uh, our interesting topics. Will be. Let me see if there is anything which I will cover from here. Uh, BGP IBG IGP interaction I will cover. Other than that, no. 
I might mention some of them like BGP flow spec RFC 50 by 75, then uh, RTBH maybe remotely triggered black holing. I can mention it as well. Uh, there are some videos on the BGP information security on YouTube channel already. BGP routes, uh, what I'm saying, BGP security here, route leak, hijack, exact prefix hijack, hi sub prefix hijacks, those famous Pakistan Telecom YouTube problems, those kind of things, uh, 512k incidents in 2014. Uh, I mean, so many resources already we have on the BGP security on YouTube channel as well. You can uh, watch if you like. Uh, AIGP also in the YouTube channel I am covering Nash accumulated IGP in couple videos in fact one of them is service provider design video I think around two hours how AIGP uh, was used Nash in seamless MPLS networks unified seamless MPLS network another video in uh, global finance network it's also real life design uh, how they used MET plus BGP MET plus future in global finance networks and how AIGP could be used could be because they didn't use AIGP uh, in that service provider network seamless MPLS network they used AIGP but uh, in another video finance network design video they they didn't use AIGP but I told them why they didn't use it could be an option etc I told them we were just doing that discussion as well. You can have a look later. Anyway, uh, MPLS point of view, we will discuss uh, basics of MPLS, of course, uh, a little bit LDP, RSVP, was labeling, uh, what are the bits and pieces in the MPLS header, important. So people still, even uh, in our groups, when we talk, because we have study groups for our training, uh, MPLS label, people think that it is 32 bits, right? Even in our group. When I say 20 bits, it was a surprise. <coughs> Header is 32 bits. 20 bit label, 8 bits TTL, 3 bits for EXP, point of service point of view we are using it. And 1 bit, what more spec, stack, showing if there is any uh, underlying label or not or is it the last label so this kind of basics we will start LDP RSVP we will talk layer 2 VPNs I will talk with you normally these layer 2 VPNs MPLS layer 2 VPNs they are not uh, asking in the exam but in my opinion you, you should know what is VPWS what is VPLS virtual private wire service which virtual private LAN service Wha what are the differences different way of doing the signaling what is signaling yeah when you hear term don't accept immediately ask why so you will okay and you will ask also me throughout the uh, course though i will explain before probably you ask but uh, still if i forget anything please don't assume you know or don't assume you should know why you should know you are here to learn. Of course, you should know subnetting. You should know some technologies anyway. I, I am not saying come here as very, very zero. I, this is not CCNA to CCIE. This is CCIE uh, class. So some, some of those technologies. So what is IP? What is IPv4? Uh, not this stuff, okay? Uh, we will talk about layer 3 VPNs anyway, because also in the exam, huh? in the lab, in the lab section, uh, we will talk about different PEC protocols as well, like OSPF as a PEC, EIGRP as a PECE protocol, BGP as a PEC protocol, when it comes to MPLS layer 3 VPNs, and because there are, uh, there are things that you need to learn also when the protocols are used as a PEC protocol, like what is shamling, what is down bit, what is up down bit, what is site of origin, blah blah blah. There are some things that we need to understand, we need to know. Uh, Interest MPLS VPNs I may not cover specifically within the class, but again, there are. I will place the videos in this, into the self-paced course. Already I have many videos in the interest VPNs or career supporting career, etc. Uh, I will place into the self-paced course. 
after you understand intra intra within the AS intra AS MPLS VPNs, probably it might be easier to understand inter inter AS VPNs. That's why step by step. MPLS traffic engineering, there are many use cases, many reasons of having MPLS traffic engineering, which we will talk with you guys also high level. Okay, maybe at one hour we will spend on that. Fine. We will spend one hour, but many of you, you will understand why we are using it, what type of networks would get the benefit. This will help you for your real life knowledge as well. Uh, Inter STE probably will not talk with you. Pet computation element, pet computation element protocol PCPSAP is important uh, for real life. Again, out of scope uh, of the CCIE exam, but I will talk with you because uh, there are many problems. Even if you do MPLS traffic engineering, so MPLS TE to solve your problems, uh, MPLS traffic engineering will introduce, without PCE, will introduce other set of problems like beam packing, uh, deadlock, lots of other problems really. In order to overcome those problems, PCE or SDN controller uh, for global topology view are used in the especially large scale service provider networks. Uh, it, got, it could be enterprise network as well, I think. Uh, but we need to understand why we have those. If I show you those things, you are very close to CCISP as well, by the way. <laughs> Not only enterprise, you are learning a lot of SP focused technologies as well. And you will, because my students should be different. Ah, these ones will be very advanced now. I mean, uh, some of them even not standard yet, right? like RMR. So, uh, Resilient MPLS ring is not, as of 2020, is not standard yet. So, we, we will, uh, these are just IETF draft yet. Not all of them, career support in career. Uh, I will mention, but we will not talk other things like MPLS TP, uh, seamless unified MPLS, GMPLS, etc., etc. VPN design, whatever you are seeing here, we will talk from the te theory as well as design aspect. And after that, of course, we will do what? Lab, yes. We will do lab for all of them as well. So, GRE, MGRE, IPsec, DM, VPN, Get VPN, Lisp, L2V3, OTV, so on and so forth. We will discuss all of them. Orhan, some of them Cisco preparatory, I don't care. We will talk. Cisco preparatory, even in CCD exam, as I told you, it's coming. DM VPN get VPN very heavily coming in the CCD exam, practical exam, lab exam. I would expect to see in CC Enterprise as well. Ah, I discussed topics by the way. What is coming in the CCA, what is coming in the CCD? I don't think it's a problem for NDA. I don't talk about the questions. Uh, there was a DM VPN question, answer is phase three. No, not like this. But I will, I will tell you, even like, let's say, after we start seeing CC Enterprise exam, people will come to me because they will ask. Personally, can I, how can I avoid that? How can I prevent that? They will say, Orhan, there was a V6 question, IPv6 question. Do you have a, any resource that I can focus? So I will learn IPv6 there. I mean, and, and it's not violating NDA in my opinion, right? So that's why uh, I, what I am expecting at the moment, because there, there was no exam yet uh, for the CC Enterprise, by the time it will be, and we will add new technologies if we are not covering anything about that uh, technology. We will add, we will uh, extend our self-paced course as well as instructor lab. So these are the topics which I would expect to see in the exam. Okay, VXLAN as well, which we will go through, not MVGR, ACT, GNIF, I will not go through those, but VXLAN and because I separated them uh, as host-based overlay versus uh, network overlays. Though today VXLAN can be, of course, network overlays, not only host-based overlays, but when they first came out, first when those protocols were invented, right? host-based versus network-based overlay, we were categorizing them. 
Today, the XLang could run on the network device as well, network-based overlay, we could say. Quality of service-wise, IP quality of service we will discuss. We do not MPLS quality of service. Within the context of CCASP, CCDI, I would go through the different, uh, we call them diff serve tunneling modes, short pipe, pipe, long pipe, or short, uh, uniform, short pipe, long pipe, uniform, short pipe, pipe, etc. those modes as well, but not, not here. IP quality of service is just enough for us. In surf as well as deep surf, so hard quality of service and soft quality of service, we will talk about security design. Some in, 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 again infrastructure security. We are not CCIE security. We are not focusing on that in, infrastructure security. What is infrastructure? ACI, URPF, loose, strict, uh, RTBH, source destination, control management, claim prote protection, blah blah blah. Those infrastructure security, BGP hardening. So those TTL uh, security mechanisms, etc. <clears throat> Multicast point of view. Some theory uh, benefits, etc. Why multicast? Why multicast? Multiple reason. A lot of reason. Fairness is one reason. Fairness, especially in the uh, finance networks, high frequency trading environment, HFT, high frequency trading finance networks they use whenever you see for example uh, airport networks campus networks large scale campus networks for CCTV we use for uh, multicast for example why <coughs> for IPTV we use multicast why how we will talk okay so benefits what type of environments they use then we will talk about IP multicast with PIM. PIM dense mode, PIM sparse mode. For the PIM sparse mode, we will talk about uh, different PIM sparse mode design options. Uh, PIM ASM, any source multicast. PIM SSM, source specific multicast. PIM binder, bi directional multicast. We will understand each one of them and we will compare from design aspect each one of them, right? And I say which one is. Least optimal routing. Least optimal. We will say PIM binder. Why? Which one is the best for the resource cons consumption? PIM binder also. Why? Worst for the resource consumption. You will say PIM SSM. Why? So we, we will understand those. I mean, I will ask question. We will discuss. But why? We will justify our knowledge. These things will help a lot in the design module in the CCI or CCD, of course. Okay? So you are becoming a designer. And then you will do multicase lab as well. I mean, lab, lab, lab. Our methodology, theory, design, lab. Theory, design, lab. T, D, L. Theory, design, lab. You see? <laughs> I am good at finding acronyms. T, D, L. I have MTL as well. Multi technology labs. Once we finish, these technologies, we will go through multi-technology labs. So in that, there will be OSPF, BGP, very large labs. So even our explanation to you takes 8, 10 hours, etc. So MTLs, multi-technology labs, some people call mock lab, etc. MTL better. Because multi-technology in, in it, and when we have more than one technology, immediately even two, you will start seeing some design inter inter interactions. And of course, you haven't seen in any CCA training those kind of interactions yet because they were focusing how to configure, how to redistribute, how to do this. We are doing more than that. We should, I mean, it's in design, it's called butterfly effect. You change something in the local area, it affects your data center design. Or wider area network, you change something, you start seeing packet loss in the local area. You change something happened in the data center. You start black holing in the wider area network. Can you, before that problems happens, can you identify and can you resolve? These are important things. Let's move on. V6 point of view, I will cover with you IPv6 transition mechanisms. Transition is huge topic. Transition. 
wrong term, eh? transition. What, what it says, tell you, like a migration, right? IPv4 will be left, will be removed, IPv6 will be placed. Of course, transition mechanism doesn't work in that way. We have overall three type of transition mechanism. Dual stack, tunnels, and translation. And dual stack running v4 and v6 everywhere in the network, starting from CPE up to the application. Of course, access network, aggregation, core network, everywhere in the network also running IPv4 as well as IPv6, both stacks. Tunnels, we have so many of them. So many of them. More than 20, 30 different RFCs we have. I will uh, show you maybe one, two of them. Uh, I have V6, IPv6 0 to hero course, and I think I am covering there six, seven of them. So uh, six are V6 to 4, six and four, the forces for extended DS life, as you can see there. So we will talk some common of them, com common ones. Uh, sure, you need to understand that last topic also like career grade NAT, CGN, because the reality today 82, 85, between 85 uh, percent of mobile operators, they use CGN or it's called sometimes uh, LSN, large scale NAT. What are the problems, drawbacks? What is LSN? What is CGN? Eh? These are real life stuff. You may not see in the exam, but 80 plus percent of the mobile operator they use this to extend their IPv4 lifetime. Huh? Extend IPv4 lifetime. Or and you are using so much time and you don't do that. I have to because this is what our real language. Okay. Evolving technology point of view. I have so many things here, of course, uh, out of scope. Also, like AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, ML, AI, etc. DL. We will not cover those, uh, but I will go through SD WAN, of course. SD WAN is the important topic now in the CC enterprise. So, Viptela is the focus. They are not focusing on the Meraki, but in the self based course, you will see Meraki videos as well. Is the access? Ah, by the way, I don't need to say any more. I think we will talk theory design uh, after that. There will be, of course, lab as well. SD WAN lab, I think around just 10 hours. SD WAN lab, you will see. Okay. Uh, at the moment, in the self based CCA course, uh, around 12 hours, just lab. SD WAN use. SD access, same thing. So we need to understand the component of SD access. Why SD access? What are the pros? I will tell you some cons as well. So, of course, you will not hear those things from the Cisco, but we will talk those. Same thing for the SD WAN, same thing for any Cisco technology. I don't care, right? I'm not Cisco employee. So, when we talk about HSRP, when we talk about DMEP, I need to talk about not only pros. Ah, you will not hear for, from me. This is the good technology. I mean, this can be good technology, but bad as well. You need to understand advantages and disadvantages. Okay, if you work for Cisco, hide those disadvantages, but at least know them, okay? <laughs> know them, because there might be some people in front of you. I heard a lot of things in my uh, network engineering career. Someone was telling me, I, they, they, yeah, we are alone here, right? I can't tell. Uh, it was, I think, Cisco meeting, and the guy was saying many times this kind of uh, example I can give you telepresence discussion I think he was saying okay you will connect your site on top of internet and we will guarantee you there will not be any uh, packet loss there will not be any problem with your uh, communication and critical keyword internet <laughs> So uh, know your infrastructure, know the pro technology, know the protocols, then talk like that. Or there was one guy, a little bit even more technical, and he was explaining what was the technology, probably ACI, something like that. And he was talking about uh, uh, head of line blocking. Yesterday, in yesterday video also, we talked about head of line uh, blocking. So, and they said immediately, we never uh, face this kind of problem. 
Why? You have uh, one to one uh, oversubscription. What is the ratio? Uh, no, you don't have to. When you said that keyword, you are done. Okay? So don't don't really throw something that you don't know. You may not know everything, of course. But at least, especially from design aspect, because in design there is no good or bad. Don't tell me this is good. No, I can prove that it is bad as well. From I just need to look at from different design point of view. For the same technology, same protocol, just from different aspects. ACA is good. Yes, of course, it can be good for many things. It can be bad for other things. OTV is good. Yes, definitely. There are many good things I wrote also. But bad things I mentioned as well. This is technology. If it would be really, really uh, good for everything, everyone would choose that one. They wouldn't have any competitor. Same thing. Or why you have competitor for training? I started CCA nearly. <laughs> CCB, I don't think I have competitor anymore. So, Viptela is the exam focus, but Meraki, uh, we will talk. By the way, what I, I am doing, and probably some of you have been following me, uh, I am doing lots of, I am bringing guests who, do, who uh, already did the design deployment for that particular technology, whichever I want to talk and real life this design discussion i call them uh, some of them private so like just ccd students they can see or it will be anymore for cca as well some of them already public you can see i think around 70 80 videos there you can see lots of design real life design discussion so uh, next week we will have meraki design uh, discussion uh, and also Viptella. Uh, for MSP, I think they did many service providers. We will also do those. Uh, as I told you, and some of them just private to the CCA CCD student. So in the self paced course, you will see with your username and password. Okay, SD access. We also talked about VXLAN and LISP and SGT. So three pillars, three components of the framework, let's say is VXLAN LISP and SGTs. Uh, VXLAN, data plane, LISP control plane, and SGTs, the policy. There is no policy plane, I mean, policy is done with that. Network programmability, we will talk. Python, Python 3, especially the, the latest version, we will talk. Some device interactions like with the NetMiko, Napalm, etc., those uh, libraries we will talk. And we will interact with the devices. Uh, configuration management Ansible, but uh, I think we will we need to add here uh, Chef Puppet as well. Then some data formats in XML JSON, some uh, data uh, modeling also like NetConf, RESTConf to interact with device uh, as a transport, and then Yang as a uh, again another data model we will talk. Other than that, in this course it's it's that one, it's enough from the uh, blueprint point of view, as well as what I want to de definitely, I need to talk as a CCA level engineer, you need to know. But in the self paced course, I might add CDN, Content Distribution Networking, as in another evolving technology. It's not evolving, it has been around for many years, but CDN environment itself is evolving. I might add that uh, technology, those videos, and AI. ML and DL. Also, probably wireless design I will add into the side page course. We don't have separate time as an instructor led live course for those. Uh, they are out of scope, of course, but I want you to know more. Uh, live session, we might be having 80 to maybe 100 hours, but side page course will be much longer because whatever I want, uh, but I cannot cover because of timing in the instructor led. There will be in the self paced course. That's why uh, you need to follow from there from the self paced course. So, probably self paced course will be around 150 to 200 hours. Uh, maybe by the time, even more. I shouldn't limit that. Uh, so, because more and more knowledge, probably you will appreciate 
for this training. Let me see. I think that's it for the agenda. So we will start looking at the technical topics. Thank you.